Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. It sounds like cattle was us at once. This is episode <laughs> zero. So where are we at? We're 35. 35. 35. Had me. <laughs> Cow beater. So uh, I'm your host, Joey Shamel. We also have today Paul Honinger. Darth Utter. <laughs> Otherwise known as Kale. Kale. <laughs> And Utterson. Jedi Jores. <laughs> Dude, we should. I didn't know we were going to have oh. names. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you became Darth Utter. <laughs> the cowing, the was, 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 was he Darth Vader? No, it was the other. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh my god. Okay. So anyway, hey, wait, wait, was that Jedi Mind? No, that was Jedi George. Oh god. Okay, so uh, remember also you can email us and tell us about all this crap. Uh, at show at I am rambling dot com. Come on, you complainers. We yeah. know you're out there. Uh, I just want to give a new rambling. I do want to give a shout hear. out to Ching Wow. <laughs> I don't need to know about your Louis Vuitton <laughs> purses anymore. <laughs> We've been getting spammed a it's bit. It's okay. All right. I'm cool. <laughs> so I still think that those are from the... the uh, yeah, the terrorists. terrorists. The terrorists! Okay, so uh, we did Star Wars in the past, but we spent so long on that episode. I think it was number six. We spent so long just talking about the movies. We didn't talk about the impact. So that's what we're doing today. Our sponsor is... Christmas Yoda! Ho, 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 I am. Well, he's not a ho. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so today we're going to be doing the time limit we've been doing the last few days. There's a little bit of change, which I'll explain later. Um, but for right now, uh, we're just <laughs> moving on to the pre-ramble. Ooh, oh. Yeah, the timing on that rock. <laughs> you can All right. please receive, will I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the pre-ramble today, we're going to start a new thing where we each put in our own... Uh, <laughs> if you will don't call him that it's not his fault like a pre -ramble. so I'm going to start today I just wanted to say when I was driving home today I was listening to the radio the John and Ken show on KFI which is kind of mainstream and they're talking about the new virus that's or the virus that's been out that locks up your computer unless you pay a ransom. Nice crypto locker. Crypto locker. Yeah. And they were saying, well, how do you pay for that? I mean, if they if they, you have to pay for it, then they'll just trace the payment. And they said, no, they've got this new thing called Bitcoin. <laughs> dun dun dun. And I mm. I was like, holy crap! And and these are not like tech people. These people they don't know tech on this show. They're yeah. like, oh, Bitcoin's this new thing they're doing on the internet. And when I heard that, I was like. Okay, I'm buying now. Like this, I am buying now. I promise. If I heard it, it on mainstream it media, was, they used it on Almost Human, the brand new TV show. If they used oh. the Bitcoin. And they, mm -hmm. they they reach down and the, and they pull out this thing. And go, oh, she was paying with Bitcoin. And before Bitcoin. you know uh. it, it's going to be on uh, Big Bang Theory. Right? So yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I went home and I bought a tenth of a Bitcoin. Oh, cool. <laughs> so right. I am now a Bitcoin well, owner. Good timing too, because it's in a decline right yes. now, and I think it's just going to rise from here. Excellent, because so. yeah, I, I paid uh, sixty-five dollars for it because it was. Okay, uh, you could have done better, but because oh. uh, there was a point where it got down to where it would have been like forty-five, but still. Oh, okay. I thought you meant forty-five dollars, where I would have paid four fifty. But no, 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 yeah. forty-five dollars. <laughs> anyway, so that's my thing. Also, it's really cool if you have a Google upload for awesome, awesome, auto awesome. Take a picture of Christmas lights because auto awesome will make them blink automatically. It's very cool. Or take a picture of raindrops on a window and check out what happens. Okay, nice. Paul, go. Uh, well, I just finished up reading a comic series. I wanted to. Uh, Give a shout out to it to Marvel for uh, their Battle of the Atom. It's the new X Men crossover that just finished, and um, so if you're interested in getting back into comics or whatever, this might be a good good way to get into it. It goes with Uncanny X Men, mm. X Men. I think Uncanny X Force, all new X Men, about five of them. And what it is is, what's happened is uh, the present day X Men brought the original past X Men to the future to show them what's going on, and um, to make the present day X Men realize how bad road they're going on. Say, so this is where we were. This is where we're going. 
where we are now. It's and, a Christmas Carol for the X Men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens yeah. is there. There's a whole series. All new X Men is all about the old X Men being in the present day, and in this battle of the Atom, the future X Men come to the past to try to send the old X Men back in time because their future got screwed up by them doing this. And there's this whole series where it's not really a bad thing that happened, but it's the I got a little hint. It's uh, Jean Grey in present day has died. Oh! Spoiler. But there's Jean Grey in the future. Well, that doesn't make any sense. They brought back the original X Men to the present day, and now the present old the old Jean Grey is now in the present. Grows up. <laughs> Mind so, blown. I know I kind of just like f***ing rambled. Jean, <laughs> Jean, <laughs> Jean no. Grey blew your So mind. I say Battle of the Atom. Check it out. It's a good series. All right. Go, Kip. Uh, I thought we were doing um, questions, so mine is a question for us. Oh, oh. Right. which is nice, nice. Where, where, which we won't have to have to answer. Where, you, where is your favorite place to eat? Oh, Vagina City. Oh my God! Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 that took you guys back, right? <laughs> You're all like, oh yeah, poutine grill. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Pussy Planet. <laughs> Pussy Pizza. Uh, I like oh, In-N-Out. No, you don't want it to be cheesy. Uh, In-N-Out. <laughs> oh, this, this adds a whole new hey, thing to my That's choice, which nice is the Crab tongue. Shack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick. Answer, answer, answer. answer. Real answer. Uh, In-N-Out. Uh, oh, Fuddruckers. I'll go Fuddruckers. I like Fuddruckers. Okay. I like uh, the hat. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Now you said the Crab Shack. Okay. That was Cheetah a real one. <laughs> All right. It's known as the palace now. Daryl, let's move on to you. You don't have much time, so. All right. I was going to make a statement, but I, I liked your idea. I'll make it a question for everybody. Okay. So uh, choose some song lyrics from a holiday jingle that are misunderstood or can be interpreted in a different way. So I'll start out by saying that um, in uh, the Run Run Rudolph song, they always talk about him whizzing like he's got a bladder problem. So he's whizzing like a shooting star. <laughs> so, and then moving on. Okay, uh, uh, from Santa Claus is uh, coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He he knows when you're awake. He knows he's, a he's a pedo. freaking pervert pedophile, man. That's true. Mm -hmm. Ben, he represents God. In he's case. watching. And yeah. What's I've the one? been dreaming of a white Christmas. Exactly. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. oh, real quick. Oh. Uh, whatever song Extend. has that has gay in it. <laughs> right. 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 Gay right. apparel. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. What is that now? Because you dress up like Bowie brings. for an evening. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Today is once again going to be Star Wars. We're going to go through 12 different subjects. Uh, we have four minutes for each individual subject to talk about. However, we're going to add something new. We have a pass, which we don't usually use unless we're doing random rambling. Pass. <laughs> Dick. You can't, <laughs> oh, yeah. you can't pass this part. This Bob. is the introduction. Okay. By the way, there will be slight delays on any passes. Right. And extends, because I have to... Wait, I haven't the explained machine. the extends yet! I know, isn't that cool? Okay. It's like that Atom thing with the <laughs> expert. Right. Yeah. Okay, from the future. The explanation okay. was I transported know. to the future. So, I really if somebody up. wants to keep talking, they can extend the, the period. It's called an extends. <laughs> they can extend... Use their extends for another four inches. Uh, four minutes or whatever to extend so we can well, talk more it about it. that long? Four minutes? Yeah. So if we oh, extend wow. it, does it take away another, the other topic? Why don't we extend for two minutes? Okay, that's fine. Two minutes. Yeah, because then it won't take away as much time. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Right. But no, it doesn't take away from the other topic. It doesn't. Topic. Okay. Yeah, it no. shouldn't. No. So we'll just we go get a hour, skip and an extend, so they even out. But okay. we might not skip. We don't usually skip when we're doing yeah, this. So, but uh, it's fine. It might be a few minutes over an hour. We're fine. Right. So today's going to be Star Wars. we got 12 different ones, and then we're going to end up, we got three minutes to close, and then we're done. And this is how we add more flexibility to the rigid structure that we've devised. Yes. Amen, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise, Praise Jesus. By the way, the reason... <laughs> The reason to date us, the reason we're doing uh, Christmas Yoda is because it is almost Christmas. We just had our, our first incoherent Christmas party. Hey. Even though you're listening to this in what, July now? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we're it caught up. Maybe it'll be February. Yeah. still, yeah, February. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> Christmas in, in the middle, middle of February. February. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get built. <clears throat> Thank God I'm bald. <laughs> uh, all inside jokes. All inside jokes. Us. You Shame will get here. Us. Put a link in the show notes. <laughs> yes. All right. First one we're going to is the never been done for effect, which basically has to do with the originality of the first sci-fi. Uh, you, you, you just went. Never been done for. <laughs> yeah, never been done for. Yeah, never been done for. Oh, no. We're just setting up for that picture again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not an old man prospect. Yeah, an animate it. Uh, <laughs> just arm moving. <laughs> the originality of the first movie trilogy 
how people reacted and uh, what it did to all sci-fi movies in general. So when that came out, I still remember uh, my dad talking to me about it saying, that ship at the beginning, you think it's about to end and it keeps going and going. And of course on Spaceballs, they made a you know yeah, parody yeah. of it where the ship just keeps going and going yeah. and going. So I know the effects were huge. I mean, that was just, uh, no one had ever done that before. Yeah. In, in the special features on the DVD trilogy, which I stopped buying after they came out with the special edition DVDs because I'm like, screw it, I bought it once, I'm not buying it. <laughs> but um, the down. thing is that they, um, I, th I think some of the comments in there were really interesting regarding that because um, Lucas started out as an editor, and I think he had a really good sense of timing and dramatic motion. Right. And that was one of the things that he was able to incorporate with the motion tracking uh, computerized cameras so you could keep repeating the same camera motion over and over again, and that way you could add the different elements, uh, like one ship passing through the scene, then another ship passing through, and it, just shoot it over and over and over again. And that meant that for the first time with model photography, you could have uh, smooth camera motions, and they mm -hmm. were doing things like zooms and swooshes and swoops and pans. Which and, hadn't been done before. Right, and that, that gave a whole new dynamic to uh, the miniature photography. Well, yeah, they, they, well, they made the models a character. Yeah. Uh -huh. When going in there, it wasn't just like before where you, you have a shot and you have like this regular rocket with, with fire blowing out of it. And just, just to like going across the screen where it was yeah, going. It actually, you know, was the center of, of um, the shot. And also, I think previous, a lot of um, miniatures weren't shot frame by frame, but like you're saying, like a Flash Gordon type of effect with like yeah. the flame shooting out. That was like the first stage was shooting stuff in miniature like that, but then the next stage was doing high-speed photography so that it would slow things down. So if, uh, you'd see it a lot in like older movies where there's uh, like a dam that breaks and it starts destroying a city. They would have, uh, it looked kind of obviously like a miniature, but the water's moving in slow motion because they used a high-speed mm -hmm. film. Um, but then Lucas took it an extra step to do frame-by-frame -frame photography of all the models, and that way they could really hone, hone the timing and make it look like it wasn't so miniaturized. Because I think anyone yeah. seeing Star Wars for the first time, you don't think, oh, a bunch of miniatures. Right, like they did before. And I think it gave uh, a bit of... A credibility to science fiction because if you look at most science fiction outside of maybe Star Trek but even that was a little hokey I mean a lot of the science fiction before Star Wars was just like god awful I With mean the big exception of 2001 Space yes Earth. excellent yeah, excellent point because yeah. that amazing for its time yes and yes. predates uh, Star Wars oh, yeah. by what Nine years, nine years or yeah. yeah so you know another originality uh, issue that with the with the first Star Wars, A New Hope, is that it's the time that it came out. Before Star Wars, a lot of the movies, they were coming out of Vietnam. Um, there was a lot of political movies, a lot of war movies, you know, a lot of almost like, like depressing movies. Platoon and came stuff. out right about then? Well, no, it was no, after. No, it was. <laughs> but the, just that time, the, revel, the um, anti-government type things or, yeah. or whatever. But when Star Wars came out, it was really that simple good guy versus bad guy. Yeah. White Knight, Black yeah, Knight. Hero's Journey. It's very pro-government, what with the oppressive empire. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't think... But it, it yeah. is a kind of a Americana in a way, because it's about the rebels who fight against the... You know, because in yeah. a way, the empire is England. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up, the character effect. The impact of more popular characters in Star Wars, uh, their originality, and how they've taken on a life of their own. So... <laughs> that was pretty good. That's good. That's I mean, we got Chewbacca, Han Solo, Luke right. Skywalker, C-3PO, R2D2, of course, Princess Leia. All those from the Lando. All those from the original, and even one Obi Wan Kenobi, and they're they're just everywhere these days. The one that surprised me was the. Uh I'm lo I'm forgetting his name. The guy, the bounty hunter. Boba Fett. Oh, Boba, Boba Fett. Fett! Yeah, well, he was such a small character, oh, it was, uh, but he became huge. huge. And yeah. you know, like on every corner in Temple City, there's now a Boba stand. Yeah, honey, <laughs> Boba. Yeah. Uh, and Daryl put in the room shot. Here. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, and so Boba Fett. That's a perfect example because, and the and it's funny that he was in an original cut shot from Star Wars, in uh, the one with the uh, Jabba was supposed to be in, right? Yeah. He's at the yeah. ship at the beginning. Yep. And then he became so popular from... Well, they added him there. They, oh, did they really? Yeah. They put oh. him, that was added at... Oh, I, I didn't know that. I thought edition. that was the original. No, no, that was they refilmed that. No, oh, the first they introduction that. of him was the Christmas the special. The Christmas special, yeah. special. Yeah. He was right. in an animated segment. Yeah. Yeah. And then Very he, bizarre. I wonder if he was put in because of the popularity. What is it about him that really grabs people, makes, makes them want... I think it's the look. I mean, yeah. Yeah. 
come on, he had a helmet. He had a rocket it's launcher. Kind of an Iron Man type of Yeah, character. yeah, that was pretty cool. Well, there's one. This goes a little bit back to the last segment, but and there, he's a bad. There's boy. this um, <laughs> idea about like that is another new thing for sci-fi is that Lucas wanted the used look, like it was a used universe. Right. Yeah. 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 And this bounty hunter has this kind of like ragtag costume that looks like it might have been pieced together while he was adventuring. So mm. it, it's like some of the elements don't necessarily fit together. Like the helmet's a little different from the body armor, and the gloves are a little different. And it seems like I definitely like that worn look. That yeah. that really added to the character. But it also, like just looking at him, you kind of make your own story about how he got that right. costume. Mm -hmm. You know, like oh, back in the eighties, there was all the story. He was Han Solo's twin brother. He was a <laughs> he was a, a clone. You know, which he ended up being a clone. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 all kinds of stuff. But. And you know, you you look at. What they did there is they're making the villains huge characters. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, we just named all the heroes, but there's also Darth Vader. I mean, that's and really what this is again. all about. The, the helmet, helmet, helmet again. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it adds myster mystery, 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 mysterio. <laughs> there's uh, something I, I found on Stumble Upon uh, a little while ago, and I believe it's something. It's called something like the. Uh, 10 Great Design Decisions of Star Wars. Oh, that's cool. And it's, right. this is a definite link to get in here, but um, it relates to this. In terms of the characters, one of the things that they point out is that um, you can identify these different characters just based on their shape. And to illustrate it, they show mm. silhouettes of like, mm -hmm. here's a silhouette of Darth Vader. Obvious who it is. Here's a silhouette of a Wookiee. You know it's Chewie. Or, Yo but even, or Yoda. Even, but even wow. Han Solo yeah. and yeah. Luke have a look. Exactly. With yeah. their clothes even. Because of even. their costumes. Yeah. 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 And Boba Fett. And Boba Fett. Um, and uh, Leia, boobs. Right. And... Buns. <laughs> buns and buns. <laughs> buns and boobs and buns. <laughs> <laughs> buns, boobs, buns. You know, as Carrie Fisher aged the buns, the second set of buns. Yeah. <laughs> kind of turning into like an old Cinnabon. <laughs> <laughs> A moment on the lips, <laughs> and turning on the hips. Oh, makes me want to. <laughs> and uh, what were some other? Uh, Just making sure it's not paused. Uh, <laughs> some other memorable. Oh, Jabba, of course. I mean, he, oh yeah, yeah. a Another, big blob. I right, mean, right, right. yeah. But well, they, they made the characters so so likable, and um, like Luke and Han, it's like people were able to relate to them. It was yeah. like you wanted to be that. Okay, it's rogue. You want to extend? Damn it. No, I don't want to extend. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next, the merchandising effect. The brilliance or just dumb luck of Lucas to hold on to merchandising rights and what he did with them. I don't think it was dumb luck. He knew what he was doing. He yeah. knew what he yeah, was he, doing. He, he, he saw where the where the where the money was going and but see the studios didn't. The studios yeah. didn't care. They right. didn't care about and nothing was like that before. They they gave him everything. Mm -hmm. They're like, we just want our cut, and you can have the rights to mm. go ahead and make t-shirts. It's kind of like <laughs> some people have gotten away with, until recently, is some people who were, I think I mentioned uh, some authors in the past who got the digital rights for their works way before Amazon Kindle <laughs> was a thing. Oh, wow. And the thing is, like, publishers were like, yeah, whatever, digital rights, what are those worth? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there are these publishers whose books are out of print, and the publisher is no longer making money, yet they... Or you know yeah. just yeah, and I've heard of treasure several trouble. several stories of of authors, you know, putting their stuff out again, and they're starting to sell. So they're, the ignorance of catalogs. your masters can work to your advantage. Yeah, and it was it. really interesting. I mean, Lucas, after the three were over, I mean, you, you got Star Wars, which was a huge hit. Then you go to Empire Strikes Back, which was amazing. And then Return of the Jedi, which was uh, it's okay. And then they were he was done. But he still kept making money, and he. But in the first, there wasn't much. No, well, there there was the. Well, at the beginning, I think it was partly dumb luck as well because mm -hmm. he's taking a chance. Yeah. There was, yeah. Before then, there was no something huge. Maybe the Star Trek or the Mego Justice League figures and all those and stuff. But, but yeah, but even those weren't. Mm -hmm. Well, let me in let fact, me ask but you. But he made so much demand for it that they didn't even come up with the figures yes. for yes. that Christmas. I want to ask you if you have any insight about this because it makes me wonder about why he didn't do some merchandising with previous efforts. Like, why wasn't there uh, THX 1138 merchandise? Why wasn't there American sucked. graffiti? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, why would, I don't wouldn't think he make the same kind of play or effort even if the movie, you know, starting you out, maybe Star Wars was no guarantee of a success either. Yeah. So, but, but um, it, well, I think toy-wise, I don't 
you know, American Graffiti in those. It's not. I mean, for, uh, it could have been the time as well. It really comes from toys at first, you know, if you think about it. Because you, you, as a kid, you want the toys. And as we yeah. grow up, then we want older things, T-shirts or Maybe whatever. Maybe part of it is that those films weren't necessarily yeah. kids' films. And... Yeah, no, probably. True. And neither and, in, neither was Star Wars, but it was more. Well, and the figures you know, didn't come out when the movie came out. It was, for, it was it's like, all ages, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like August yeah. and October, November. Seven months later. Seven months yeah. later. Seven months later, you were able to buy a certificate to get oh, the that's figures right. like yeah. four months later. Right, right. So it wasn't, a, hmm. you figure, almost a year before the actual figures came I, out. It, so I, it, I, it was already popular. Was it his idea to do it, or was it 20th Century Fox's idea to do the figures, I wonder? I think it was uh, his. My understanding is it was his. It was his. Okay, yeah. so it was really, he was the mastermind behind the merchandising. Yeah. One of the things he does good, like we talked about, timing, creating worlds and stories, uh, uh, merchandising, directing. But mm-hmm. The idea but with the merchandising. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, with the merchandising effect, it, the, the problem it has, too, is it sometimes um, affects the story. And it affects, mm-hmm. because if you look at, like, Return of the Jedi, the Ewoks, what are the Ewoks there for? <laughs> Yeah, so, they sold toys. Well, I think the real big example of that is pod racing because that yeah. seemed like it was obviously made to make a video game out of it. Yeah, right? it did kind of, and it was a fun video. It game. was an awesome <laughs> video game. I loved that well, video game. That. It's like Red Planet. Yeah, that's why I liked it. Yeah. That was so much fun. That was his passion because of his his racing. Oh, that's true. Love yeah, racing and stuff. So right. that was like. Yeah, I think that was his. But maybe it all kind moment. of fit together. But yeah, you look at everything. It's like, oh, to make figures. Oh, to make right. toys. Did you just say jizz moment? <laughs> well, the thing, <laughs> looking beyond just the toys and everything. I mean, it's putting Star Wars marketing on everything, including Disneyland. All right, which we will and get lunch to boxes, and which we'll get to. Right. All right. Next maybe up, we should have extended that one. Do you want to? No, it's okay. too late. All right. Next up, we've got the pop culture effect, the huge impact of Star Wars on the world. You can go on with that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the way of... it influenced every nook and cranny of modern culture, because over the next ten years, it really, you know, it bloomed. And I think it's a lot of uh, what I said: the kids started growing up, and they still love Star Wars. And it wasn't just Star Wars itself; it's the fact that ILM was established and Skywalker yeah. Sound, and those things bled into other media, um, like television had uh, Battlestar Galactica, mm-hmm. and ILM did their Star Wars-like special effects for uh, that series. Right. And I think that helped spur the idea of not only um, imitators but also the ILM and and the various uh, studios that. Lucas was putting together were also kind of imitating Star Wars in a way by doing other projects. Oh, and I just oh thought, yeah, because Battlestar was a total. Yeah, I just weird. thought of something that was happening right at that time. VCRs were becoming available, yeah. so it was the first big group of epic movies that you could, with a few years, end up having. It home. was like the only legitimate use of a VCR other than porn. <laughs> Star Wars, Star, <laughs> and Star Wars porn, <laughs> yeah. and that sure was good too. There. And that's well, that's part of the pop culture. I mean, they made the they made the Star Wars porn. They made Star Wars everything. You didn't just get the toys in the lunchbox and the TV shirts. And Zach and Mary make a porno. They have a Star Wars porn. <laughs> oh, do they really? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Funny. And it's it's just showed up everywhere. And I and it, you know it's part about the growing up with it, but. You know, Daryl, you've got that Star Wars wallpaper. My right. cousin Greg had that Star Wars wallpaper, and it's part of their merchandising again. I mean, they yeah. must have surrounded us as kids and with it. The thing it. that's interesting is being a trailblazer and pioneer in that space. It became so common later on because it wasn't that many years later that you know the, you had like ET lunch pails and ET this uh, and I that and figures and everything. So like everyone mimicked, and that that again is the whole pop culture effect. You know, like everyone started mimicking what Lucas did with Star Wars, not just in terms of entertainment media, but all of the merchandise. You know that I was saying in ET. I mean, it was such it's how so big it was. Spielberg put Star Wars stuff in his movie. The kids are playing with right. Star Wars toys around. The, That's right. And things hanging from his That's his right. uh, uh, ceiling, and then when they go trick or treating. E.T. meets Yoda. And mm. that's that's also the what's the the secret R2-D2s that are in all those movies. Mm-hmm. Like Close Encounters, it's an mm-hmm. easy one to find on the ship, but there's some that I, I've heard of Raiders. they won't tell you about, and I don't know where they are. Yeah, hmm. Raiders has... Raiders. Seen, has uh, supposed to be R2-D2's dome on the light when they're tied to it, when all the faces melt. Which but dome? In the... It's bottom dome. <laughs> okay. But in the uh, Will of Souls, mm-hmm. with the snakes and stuff, there's the hieroglyphic of... Um, C three PO and R two. Oh, that's cool! I didn't know that one. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I did see that one. Yeah, and so you know they start end up 
being everywhere. You but see a lot it. of that is two director friends paying homage to oh, each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah that's case. true. But it's it's part of what you see, and you see things everywhere. I mean, I, I it just Star Wars is part of my childhood. Well, here's the thing: Did Spielberg efforts find their way into <laughs> Star Wars? Spielberg. 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 Yeah. Did, did I say Spielberg? <laughs> you Spielberg. said Spielberg. <laughs> okay, rewind that. Back up. Spielberg. <laughs> what you gonna do when Spielberg comes to get you? <laughs> He's a new wrestler. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, yeah, there are ETs in Phantom Menace. Oh, oh that's, that's right. right. Yes, yeah. there is. Okay, good call. Good that's call. right. That's I forgot I about, about that. that. Yeah. And nice. So everything affects everything else. But I. But what I'm saying is, I. Just, I'm, it's just the '80s. I feel like Star Wars just kind of encapsulated well, it in so many ways. The uh, the and whole the uh, Cold War yeah. uh, missile Star Wars. Yeah, the Star Wars thing. So what Star Wars project? What was it called? Yeah. All right, All right uh, the spinoff effect, and this kind of goes into that because I want to talk about. Yeah, we. I think I jumped the gun there. <laughs> yeah, well, no, but the the spinoff like productions of Star Wars: Birth, like Droids, the car- Saturday morning cartoon, Ewoks. Oh, like official spinoff. Special, official spinoff. Official, official spin-off. Or okay. more accurately, though, the lack of anything really connected to Star Wars, especially during the early years. It's mm, amazing the yeah. how little there was, and I think that's part of what you were saying earlier. Was he? almost kept it from us. He wouldn't do yeah. any more movies. He didn't allow the rights to go out for hardly anything. And because of that, all the people who loved it just were clamoring for more and more. The and one thing is there was the Marvel comic. Right. That Which is what we're going to talk about next. Yeah. Is the expanded didn't universe. they also okay. quickly start the, the books? Mm-hmm. There were some, yeah. some books. I split them, split them in my mind's eye. Yeah, but and, it and wasn't until like 19... 19- 90, it was the heir to the empire, right? The empire. That, that was when they started the, the expanded whole, universe. Yeah, the expanded universe. But yeah. so before that, there wasn't too much. Oh. There were some Marvel comics. There was some <laughs> the droids and all the stuff. Now it seems wants. like it's too much because it's like yeah. I mean, Lucas Arts started doing the video games in the '90s or whatever. Like uh, X Wing was humongous, yeah. and um, that kind of got the ball rolling. But now it's like I look at some of the things like the Clone Wars animated stuff and all that. It just doesn't interest. Well, me. well, let's get you to know, that in the next one when we talk about expanded universe. I want to kind of focus. Yeah. This time, right now, on what was there at first? Like, uh, it seemed, it, I mean, okay. Christmas special, it's a lot of it seemed cheesy. I mean, even the early Marvel yeah. comics were kind of okay, they weren't serious. No. And so, I think people who really wanted Star Wars couldn't get it. I like the Marvel comics, were they good? I don't know. I've got like because one. I liked what they did with it is that they, um, when each movie came out, like the, the first movie was like a three or four part series mm-hmm. that just told the story of A New Hope. And then after that, there were these side stories, right? And then when Empire came out, that was like the next few issues of the con- of the. Oh, that's book. cool. So it was like this, you know, epic story so it that tied it. T- yeah, tied together. What happened that after Return of the cool. Jedi, though? Beats me, man. It did, it did keep going, though. <laughs> I mean, they went. They went to. Um, yeah, I think I've got it. I think I've got. I think I have number one hundred. Still going? Yeah. No, no, not that. Not no, that no, serious. No, they've got lots of comics, but that's part of the expanded universe. That that right. early stuff was. Uh, Okay, outside of the comic, though, I think a lot of it was... I don't know, Lucas... They just had droids. I think he got felt burnt on the Christmas special because it did so <laughs> bad. Dude, it everyone felt horrible. Burnt on that. And what sucks is... That, that was, was CBS. It yeah, was like yeah, a habanero yeah, right, t- right. tamale you didn't even chew. Well, that's what I'm like saying. Oh, you yeah. saw that and said, oh, I'm... Maybe that's what happened. He was like, we're not doing this ever again. We're not going to have right. something like that again. Well, his, his story is that producers kind of stepped in and took it away from them right. which you know you can choose to believe that or not but whatever the case something went horribly wrong whether it was his <laughs> yeah, fault it went horribly and, wrong. It, and it probably you're right it probably did make him gun shy about that and that might explain why something like um Battlestar Galactica came about rather than um, Star Wars the TV series right yeah. right right because it seems like those next the, during the 80s you, you were a Star Wars fan like I was and there was all these things you know Bantha Tracks that was the you yeah. got the newsletter or right. you know you watched the video if you had a bootleg copy or whatever and you know you watched it on HBO or Zen, Zenith TV or whatever so, no Select TV Select was, TV yeah. Select TV <coughs> and, but, and, and you just wanted needed more Star Wars you're probably watching it on a Zenith TV yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on, on TV <laughs> you know and, and I've talked I've talked to some people about you know, like what Daryl's brought up about there's like too much Star Wars now and stuff. Some people say like, oh, well, there's all these comics and now there's these shows and this and that. And I tell them there was a time there was nothing. I know because and when it's, we it's a generational it? thing for some. It's like there was a time eighty five to like ninety two, yeah. ninety three yeah, when, when we were like teenagers. Out, there was nothing, nothing. Yeah. And and the thing is that what what was what was. My <laughs> 
It was destroyed. Oh, I, 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 I was gonna say, what was Lucas doing then? Like, why wasn't he? And this kind of moves on to the next one, which he is making Howard. Howard. Which oh, is he, was the he, was, he was making Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. He was trying different. I, I guess that's what happens. Uh, and Indy. <laughs> Indy yeah. Jones. Yeah. Well, this is this goes into the uh, expanded universe. As Star Wars remained strong through the years, some of the stories, uh, characters came, books, comics, toys. Expanded universe, which Paul said started in the 90s. But before that, maybe Lucas was doing like what he what happens with everybody. He's like, I don't want to get known for Star Wars, so I'm going to go do other things. You know, that's what a lot of people, like Harry Potter, uh, J.K. Rowling, right? She says, probably done with Harry Potter, wants to do other things. Haven't heard anything from her. You know, it, it could be something like well, that. Well, she did write like some... Detective. She fiction. did write a detective story, yeah. and it's a bestseller. And it's kind of a it's called adult the Casual too. Vacancy, I believe. Really? She did it under a pseudonym. That might be why you haven't. heard Oh, of that's it. probably why I haven't heard of it. Interesting. I, I know a lot of Star Wars projects haven't happened too because um, the quality that they want it to be. Like right. you look at like Young Indiana Jones. I mean, that's that's the quality of those those shows is like totally different than watching like a typical. I don't know, A team or something. However, they were. Oh, you mean they were better quality? Better quality, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the effects he wants to do, a lot yeah. of this, it's like it co it costs too much to make those shows. Yeah. In, a, in television, maybe Movie, he, you have the big budget, you can do that for a two hour. Maybe it really was. was in Briscoe County also, or like, that's something we should know. probably look up. Maybe he was. He, really good. Show, he really just know? wanted quality, and he knew it wasn't available yet for whatever yeah. reason, so he just stuck around. At any rate, well, he was doing stuff like digital effects and Young Indiana Jones that yeah. were. Yeah. Um, before digital was really ready, so they they were generally limited and and kind of. I remember actually one time um, they opened up the show and there was there was a snow scene and they were actually using like the toaster snow overlay the video toaster, <laughs> oh, no way. which was kind of funny because it's like a loop an animated loop <laughs> to make snow, but um, yeah, it's like that kind of stuff wasn't really ready, but they you know it's, it took a few years before that stuff would be uh, cheap enough to do for a. Well, I remember Heir to the Empire was the big book that was like Lucas said, this is what happens next, you know, and I approve this book and the and the trilogy. And that really started it all off again. I mean, it, it let us Star Wars fans get back into the universe. Then the Dark Horse comics started coming out. Yeah, the Dark and, Empire. Yeah, Dark and Empire that. and all that. And it was like, wow, Star Wars is being reborn. And I think that's when Lucas, either, re either that was his plan or he realized... There's still the love they out there. Let's do the go. prequels. Well, yeah. there are also those rumors forever that since A New Hope was episode four, that yes. there were going to be three other movies. And then the the big rumor was that he had written nine screenplays for nine right. movies yeah. before the first one was even shot. And but, I believe what he said since then is he had a treatment for right. nine. He had an outline. Yeah, outlines he didn't have for nine, script, but he did not yeah. have full scripts. And then yeah. I think he got so burnt with the first three, so much criticism, he was just like, screw it, I'm not... You know, gonna do anything else? If and he that's, was afraid of criticism, what the hell happened with the prequels? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no. What I'm saying is <laughs> that that burned him. Yeah, the thing is, is I think he was the type of guy that didn't like criticism, and he was never yeah. getting it for the first. Series. He's like, I can do whatever I want, yeah. and people didn't yeah. criticize him during the making of the movies, and then well, that's a, that's the a big difference in, in the pose. original trilogy. Yeah, you got people except Yana Robe criticizing right. him, and I think in the prequels you have Yes Men. Yeah. It's true. Which has nothing to do with the expanded universe. Yes. So the expanded universe, um, <laughs> too right. much now, right? This is what, what a lot of people are saying. I think it, no. I think there's a good no, amount. I just want to get to it. what you like. Yeah. I want to get yeah. to it. I want to, I want to, I want to time well, Just because, because that's, that's out the there thing. doesn't mean you have to look at all of it. Yeah. Star so. Wars is one of the universe where everyone wants everything to fit in one timeline. Yeah. It's like this, this, this. Yes. You, you read Star Trek, there's just yeah, There's crap all over the place. And it's okay. So but, it's like... <laughs> You, Star Wars is that you have the expanded universe. I launched extend. 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 All right, extend. Two minutes. Yeah. So well, how is this going to work? I see it as <laughs> no. you have the expanded right. universe, which is the EU. Well, can you wait two minutes and then? No. Well, I could just restart this round. Okay. Guess, yeah. After two. All right. Okay. Yeah. Just keep going. Okay. Okay. So, so you got the expanded universe, and then you have the the actual universe. Where mm -hmm. to me, the expanded the, the, expanded universe. the official <laughs> universe extended. Is really what's going through Lucas and through through Lucas film. So that'd be the movies, that'd be the Clone Wars show, right. and um, the future TVs okay. and stuff. Where I really feel like the books, since it goes through Del Rey and all these different authors and stuff, that is more. It may fit in, but I don't. I don't see it as official. Because yeah, I think it's cool stories though. Because Lucas obviously he gives the okay to the stories, but I don't think he's got like a big 
timeline checking every little fact and detail and no, making sure that no. everything the, is... the thing that was really great from from an expanded point was that uh those that group of people that made their own star wars movie mm-hmm you remember? Yeah, and they, yeah, yeah. And what was it called? And I, I remember downloading it yeah. for free and watching it, going, "Troops, my what was it? Troops? No, not no, no. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, they the special effects yeah. were stunning on that one, and it was really good. And, and <laughs> troops for that me, awesome. <laughs> for me, because I know that the new movies are going to be coming out, which is something we never thought would happen. We, I mean, we thought when Lucas said no more movies, we're done. I thought that he, all it'd you be had after his death, all yeah. you would have would be more holiday specials. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what I thought was just this expanded universe, the books, the comics. There'd be no more video type stuff that you'd find at all. And now we're finding that they are expanding to the but movies. But the games keep going too. Like, well, yeah, and, the, and that's what I, I want to play. The games I want to do. I want to get the main timeline. And, yeah, yes. I think that that'd be the movies because I, 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 I like. I want to compare it to like um, comic books, like the X Men. You watch the movies, yeah, and you read the comic books. <laughs> they don't hand in hand. That right. was your two Days minutes. Of, Days of Future Time Past up. was two up. Uh, two, Time two, up, two folks. It has <laughs> nothing to do with this new movie coming. Really? Out. Time up. Okay. Uh, next up, two additional minutes. Is Rose, the, keep going. Is the Han shot first effect <laughs> the good and the bad that Lucas re- the good and the bad stuff that Lucas redid in his movies, <coughs> and whether or not he really should have. Down with revisionist history. <laughs> yes and no. I agree with the yes and no. Yes. <laughs> at the end, I really love in um, special edition the end now with the more dogfighting. Uh huh. Yes. The, oh yeah. The space battle. In Star Wars. In Star okay, Wars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I really like. Oh, that no, it's, more, it's, it's excellent more because shit flipping around and because the first one. If you watch the original, I still got an original of the the first uh, Star Wars before they redid mm-hmm. the the, the dogfight. And it, you, even though it was so amazing at the time, you can't follow what's going on. Yeah. There and yeah. when they made the special edition, you realize what was happening. Mm-hmm. You could see there's three ships going in. These are the three taking up here. They're following this guy. He needs help. He comes in here. Here comes Biggs helping him out. Yeah. You know, it's it's very clear to see. I never saw that in the original. Well, I could I just just from I could infer it from what they're saying, but I couldn't see it. And Biggs adding the scene of him meeting yeah. Biggs before he takes off, I thought was was great because it really connects to when he dies. Why does the music change like that? And he's so sad. Yeah, and, it, and they didn't go as far as putting in the scenes at the beginning, which would have been really cheesy. I think that would have been too long. Yeah, yeah. I, that did that would have the flow would have just been lost. My comment about it is that as much as I appreciate good digital effects, when special edition came out, they were still drastically different from the models and I think it does clash a little bit you can mm. definitely spot that oh the, this is a CG, the CG X-Wing yeah. and this is a model X-Wing if they'd have reshot all those scenes with models I would be uh, to match it. I see what you're saying I think I for me I'm, I'm not quite as <clears throat> picky on that I guess I, I'm okay with it but you're right because I can but see. I mean I can't like I just can't help it taking me out of the scene because it's like all of a sudden it's like oh that's a different looking shot yeah. than this other one and I it stands know. out in my mind that oh new shot old shot it new doesn't shot, you know what shot. I think for me they cleaned I, I think maybe because I don't have as much of an eye for detail they they cleaned up and the old shots enough that I don't notice it as much hmm. I just wanted new Star Wars when the special editions oh, came yeah. out I just yeah. wanted like the Jabba scene I know the Jabba looked like Kind of crappy, and then yeah. first came out. Yeah. But I love that scene. Yeah, because no, that's an awesome. It's scene. like that's Han Solo. Like yeah, that's, that's Chewbacca. That's and it's or new. It's like, we've never that's seen new. before. It's like, oh, and even though he has to walk over Jabba's <laughs> tail, that's kind of funny. I mean, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I think he, they did it well, and I think that was fine. Now, of course, there's things they probably should not have done, such as Han shooting yeah. first. Not yeah. only it does that suck out, it looks bad. It's really. Bad. It looks hard. Then they tried it again to make it like he moved his head. Yeah, it's right. just like come on. It's just and also all these things about updating uh, the ghost of Anakin and stuff oh, like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> just like the one. Like, Boy, it's whatever. so nice you came to be. You didn't show up in like, a. Image I'd never know. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. recognize. All of a sudden, in Jedi, Hayden Christensen's in the credits now. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, 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 I kind of liked it. I thought I thought it wrapped. Actually, it should have been the kid. yeah, but I always that felt that, been better. Like, that make Vader it, make it the ten year old Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought Vader, when he died as old man Vader, he was well, on the light be... side. That is when the last time he was on the light side. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, thing too, like Obi Wan doesn't show up as uh, he's like crap. Dude, no, 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 so no. Old man and, and because Alec he's got a point because the, the, that's the light side of the force. Right. So it's how he looked when he was on the good side of the force, not when he was on the evil side, uh, of, the dark yeah. side of the force. Yeah, but he redeemed himself. Bro. Oh, but then you see, that, that's kind of like 
more revisionism. Yeah. Okay, but the worst, but of course, like the Han shooting. The Han shooting was not yeah. should not have been done. But of course, the most recent and the worst. I'm okay even with Ewoks blinking. Dude, Ewoks blinking is awesome. Okay, <laughs> but the quill. What is it? No. no. Anybody want to extend? No. 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 <laughs> All right. Moving on to the prequel effect. What the prequels are, what they could have been, and the positive negatives of these babies of Lucas. And it's just what you said earlier, Daryl. Give me an S. Give me a U. <laughs> give me a K. And wait. You spelled it wrong. <laughs> what do you spell? Sook. Sookie, Sookie. Give me an I. Why not? Sookie. I can't spell. Um, I, I think Daryl said it earlier. He was surra- Lucas was surrounded. Or Paul, whoever said it. it was yeah. Paul said. Paul said. Lucas was surrounded by yes men because. The- it's because Paul's lips were moving in sync with oh, what I was yeah. thinking. That's why you're confused. <laughs> Here's my opinion. Phantom Menace. Pretty bad. Uh, it's like watching a galactic C-SPAN. Yeah, it needs to be. <laughs> it is. Parts of it are. It needs to be redone. Reporting from the scene is Senator Palpatine. Yeah. And, you know, that was a big... I think that that's a, that really uh, brought it down is because people yeah. didn't understand it. You start well, off Star Wars with the trade blockade. Yeah, I know. You know, and it's all this political stuff that... what In, in the first original trilogy, it, there's not much, you know... Draw, no, especially uh, the first movie. The first movie uh, is so the first movie is so focused on Luke, you know, and you go <laughs> a little bit wider as he enters into a wider world, but it's so condensed on him. And then you get into Phantom Menace, it's, it's just like well, <laughs> it's still his hero journey. Yeah, they're and, they're okay. I, I'm with Paul about his about the um, trade stuff and like the politics being a little deep. But it's not like it's not understandable for an adult viewer. It's just that it's kind of dry. And the other thing is that the kids were, or the movies were so geared toward kids. <laughs> and then that they, that's yeah. a subject matter that kids aren't going to gravitate to. Yeah, and, and I, I found myself really enjoying all the politics and the Trade Federation, yeah. all that stuff, because I was an adult. And then they'd switch over to Anakin, and it was like, okay. what the Yippee! hell is going on? Yeah, that him? was. Yippee! Yippee! Okay, uh, and, but no, I didn't like the politics. I was confused by it. I was really confused. Later Later on, I get it, but it still confused me. I feel that Phantom Menace had very good scenes that could have been used and it could have been better, but they just put too much other crap in there. And then I think they got better on episode two, but yeah. still lacking. Then episode three, I thought was was better. Yeah. Like- but the I hate the scene where he turns. It's so and yeah. uh, and the and the rumor is they redid that. It wasn't even that much. He turned even oh, faster how, originally. Uh, how quickly he... Yeah, or, or apparently Where... originally he was just like, okay, I'm bad. Yeah. And Lucas was like, what do you guys think? And they're like, uh, maybe we should redo something here. Like, maybe yeah. have the other Jedis if come in. Have just... Mace Windu. Have Mace Windu. Who like flew out a window. Turning. It, it just was, wasn't... There was something well that done. was needed there. But there's a lot of coolness to it, and uh, it's just... Uh... As I'm a whole, call, they're not I'm calling an extend on this one. Okay. You guys keep going. Because okay. the problem is, it's just, there's a lot of good, and that's why I feel like a re-edit is so needed. Like, I want to no. re-edit all three into maybe one good movie, you know? And that can be the prequel. Another issue so with that's the... your extends. I'm the only one that got, gets to extend oh, now. come on, man. No, I'm the I only one who extend. extended. He's extending. You too. I thought, I no, thought Paul you didn't extend. extend. Oh, okay, good. I said, did you want to extend? And he didn't. No. So, oh, okay. the thing is, is that... Um, the, the thing is, for me, the prequels I thought are good. I love how they expand the entire universe and in a visual way. But as movies on their own, they're put together badly. Yeah, and you know, a, an issue that I always thought was a negative issue for the um, original trilogy, not the original, the prequel, the prequel, is that you know the ending. Yeah. You know yeah. how horrible the ending's going to be. Yeah, it and is. Then really again, people were expecting that Anakin was going to be this little kid that's like burning little bugs and stuff and like and he was, was way too and he was sweet like this sweet for, right, yeah right well the the thing is i mean sometimes knowing the ending doesn't necessarily ruin things like you know we're we're in the middle of the hobbit trilogy right now and we anyone who read it knows apollo, how it ends. apollo 13 you know? yeah i mean that's perfect you know they're they're gonna make it but still you're like because it but, was done well but we right. know the real ending yeah yeah it's and the Hobbit, we know the real ending from the book. Oh, right. but we didn't this, know. We didn't know. Yeah. There's, there's like a hundred different. It's been twenty gone, years, yeah. and there's a hundred different ways that people think that it should have. Daryl, you took gone. the extent, so okay. You go. So um, I'm going to bring up two things. Um, the the first one, I think we can gloss over a little bit, but I just don't think that the design is as strong in the prequels. 
it seems like they wanted to put so much stuff in there that they were cramming a bunch of stuff together, and yeah. none of it is quite as cool as the stuff in the original trilogy. Now, that could be because I'm fond of the other stuff since I grew up with it, yeah. but I can't think of a single thing that's as cool as like the Slave One or the Millennium Falcon in the prequel trilogy, mm-hmm. right? Is there anything as cool as a, a Corvette or a... Um, just you know, a lot, there are a lot of different things I can think of. You know, yeah. Like there's this, this. Is there any character that looks as cool as Boba Fett in the original trilogy? Right. right? Or in the oh, prequels. in the prequels, like the yeah, prequels. that's you know you make a good point because not just being cool, but there is no character to really grasp onto. Well, that's the second problem, oh, okay. is no. character. Yeah. Right? But the yeah, characters no, there were so like flat. Um, there was very little tension. You know, like it's like we're the good guys. We're gonna have like no tension in our, um, you know, like Obi Wan and and. Um, Qui-Gon, they were just like so kind of even toned with one another and whatever tension was supposed to be there just fell flat. And they had these great actors and to play those <laughs> parts. Yeah. Yeah. And they could like, not direct them. No. Right. How did they not shine? Yeah. And the, Nellie uh, Portman was just she looked nice. And yeah. th- taking out of the con- <laughs> taking out conjunctions, I think, is a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> this is what we are doing today. Yeah, what are the data? <laughs> <laughs> um, the Jedi data. I know where he's going, but so okay. And next, kind of goes on from that, so we can keep talking a little bit about this because this is a generational effect. What was the first trilogy? Re- was the first trilogy really good, or did we just like them because we grew up with them? How our generation see Star Wars versus those who grew up during the prequels? Because it's a di- very different view from people. I mean, Paul, you got. The kid who's kind of grew up but not really i've talked to some kids you know who i've taught who have are all into the prequels the clone wars mm-hmm. and everything and they, they think the 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 ones that we grew up with are just boring as crap <laughs> yeah I, I i've watched um like logan and i we've watched we watched star wars and stuff and there's there's some parts of the original trilogy he's just like mm, whatever but you get into like the prequels with the big jedi battles and stuff and lightsabers mm-hmm. flying everywhere that catches and this is like Darth Maul, huge, huge with the kids. I'm curious to see what what they'll what they'll think of it when they're like adults, because they're getting to that point. And I'd like to talk to you know some adults in a few years and say, hey, you grew up with the prequels. What do you think of them now? Yeah. Because maybe the oh, I liked it when I was a kid, and, or maybe they will. You one can of the talk few to things, adults now, Joey. And it's one of the few things yet. I thought was um, <laughs> you're right. That that is like one of the only things I can think of in the prequels that actually got better. The swordplay. Oh or yeah, the, the lightsaber. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, the, the Yoda fight. kicking ass was just so cool. Yeah, that was pretty good. But uh, Darth Maul, though, in particular, like the times mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I basically got watch? scheduled to watch uh, the Phantom Menace like five times with different groups of people, right, in the theater. <laughs> uh-huh. And after I saw it the first time, I almost wanted to back out of the other four. Okay. <laughs> but what kept me in and th- sitting through the rest of the movie is I'm like, there's that really kick ass fight with yeah. Darth Maul at the end. Like that's what I'm here for. It's almost yeah. like Lucas is like, well, we can do all this stuff now, and he overdid it and forgot about the story and character and yeah. and everything that matters because he wanted to do all the stuff he couldn't do for the old movies. Well, the best, the strongest screenplays in the series were ones that he didn't write, and mm-hmm. the strongest movies were ones he didn't direct. Yes, and mm-hmm. even more important, I mean, think about it. Do you think like Kirshner and him had such a falling out from Empire? Yet Kirshner did such an amazing idea. Do you think Lucas was like? You know, uh, you know, I'm planning on doing three sequels. You're not going to be part focused well, Kirsch- on character and emotion. And I, exactly, because that's what Kershaw did, and, right. and Lucas was probably like, "You'll, you'll never be one." Screw of the emotion! Three. I'm going to make Jedi. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and Spielberg, and Spielberg would would never be out. one of the three. <laughs> he wanted Spielberg to do to do Jedi. Oh, really? It was Jedi? Mm, because what it was something with the. Um, you know what the shark because would have was he's fake. <laughs> such a fallout <laughs> with the true. Motion Picture Association. Interesting. Um, that they wouldn't allow it. Okay, right. Really? Yeah. Huh. He had, I mean, yeah, it's probably a huge a, thing. Look, there's no... Or maybe it was the Director's Guild. Oh, the Director's Guild. Yeah, that's probably. What it was. And I think... Yeah. Because, look, there's no... At the beginning of the movie, there's no starring whatever, whatever. He had yeah. he paid big bucks to not have that. Happen. Oh, that's right. And pretty, yeah. like, got, like, blackballed from people. Huh, oh, yeah, Lucas was uh, definitely a rebel. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. But no, he did he did buck the system and the system was trying to bite him back for it. And the thing is he built his own little empire <laughs> See, oh, hey. because of all the money he made. So the thing is he he yeah. operated outside of Hollywood. And interestingly, 
Hollywood started depending on him more and more for his mm -hmm. effects house. And then he wasn't in the little jar jar anymore. He came out. Oh, uh -huh. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> maybe maybe there's something to be said about uh, adversity, though. He had to fight during those times he, uh, against the system, right. and so the movies were really awesome. And then well, when he could do whatever he wanted, they were just a lot of action. He was working with the budget, too. I think that this is one of those things that's fundamental I about don't. things like design and art, is that I think art is people straining against their limitations. And uh, once all the limitations good. are gone, you no longer can really create great art. Oh. It, it, you know, philosophically, that... You could probably argue that. I want to extend that because I have something to say. Okay. Uh, oh, with the generation. Crap. Well, with with the generations, you were talking about the original trilogy group, mm -hmm. the prequel, and then the Clone Wars kids that are that are growing up. Yeah. Now, what's great about Clone Wars is with that series, they had characters for you to rally behind. Kids, there was Captain Rex. People that got very popular. Ahsoka Tano. Even, to me, Anakin and Obi-Wan, watching Clone Wars, that's the Anakin and Obi-Wan that I wanted to see in the movie. That's the real, the real kind prequel of Anakin this... and Obi-Wan. And what they were doing, the oh. brotherhood they created and stuff, that's, that's the bond that I wanted to see in the movie. I get the feeling from what you're saying that Clone Wars is something I'd really like, even though I haven't journeyed yes. into that yet. Yeah. Clone Wars is great. It... it, it um, it's Star Wars for the for the new kids, the next mm -hmm. generation. There, it, it does follow a, a small timeline or a theme. There's mm -hmm. episodes well, uh, that's just uh, like oh. there's there's episodes where it's just like you know villain of the week, whatever. But <laughs> there is an overall tone. <laughs> um, Rhymes. But what did I want to say about Clone Wars? Is <laughs> I was just gonna say that. is that I forget what I was gonna say. Take it away, Paul's extends. We're, we're the world's slowest rapper. It has something to do with Anakin. Oh, you, some kids you, you may talk to if they've only grown up with with uh, Clone Wars. And haven't seen the others, you'd say you'd tell them Palpatine, good guy or bad guy. He's a good guy. Really? He's Senator Palpatine. Interesting. Clone, wow. Clones, good guy or bad guy. They're good guys. Because they're not stormtroopers. Oh my god, that's yeah. right. Because yeah, even for all of us watching that, you know, we're like, oh, we we know where this is we going. We know where it's going, yeah. Even get the yeah. music, dun, 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 dun. And we're like, oh, Empire. But you're right. But they, Anakin, Anakin's a hero. That's right, because he's totally the good guy. I didn't think of it like that point of view. Yeah. God, they must he's, be pissed He's a good guy until he starts choking people out. And killing little yeah, kids. Killing little yeah. babies and kids. Oh, my God. I... Master Skywalker. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 can you help us? <laughs> no, it's like this. Master Skywalker, can you help us, please? It's coming. <laughs> oh, you killed all of us, too. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but I, I think that that's a huge... <laughs> there's always going to be a huge gap until it passes. And now we're going to have these new movies. And there's going to be like a, a different generation. Oh, Our kids are going to grow up with the new with ones. With the new, new movies. And it's going to be completely hey, different. Hey, 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 move on. Okay, so next one is the Jar Jar effect. What's, All right. What's the deal with... Anyone that says this one and they're going to meet my wrath. Well, hold on, now hold I'm on. I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, uh. well, no, because <laughs> this, on this is an interesting one to look into character. Lisa no like extends. What? Uh -huh. What's the Lisa Jar Jar? hard on massive already. <laughs> what was Lisa the psychic call me 1-800 Jar yeah, Jar that's, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, we're not... This is not... But that's the Jar Jar No, it's not. That's it, what it does to people. <laughs> that's what it does to you. Ah, Brius, I don't like Is it. Is looking for Joss 4? No. Oh. <laughs> Jar Jar 4? No, it's, it's what's the deal with Jar Jar? What was Lucas trying to do and what went wrong? I mean, obviously, he was not trying well, to he make... Had, he had to meet a quota for a certain number of black people in the movie. <laughs> no. oh. Mace Windu okay. alone wasn't cut. When, I, I, wasn't when I saw that, I did not understand why people were saying racist because I didn't get that tone. Because to me, right. black people... Hey, what's going on, man? And I was like, Jar Jar's not like that. <laughs> you know what's... But well, I, all he had thanks feel, for bringing it down a notch, Sorry. <laughs> be, be glad Jar Jar was not a Jedi. Because he'd, oh be, my like, God. he'd be like, Massa! Massa! <laughs> oh, oh, man! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh my God. Okay, so... But what was he... But forgetting that whole racist thing, what was he trying to do? Obviously, I think I think he was trying to make Jar Jar into a c 3 po character. I think he was... I think he was... No. Kale's nodding his head, or shaking his head. I think he was trying to, to make a comic relief, but he just pointed it too much towards well, the kids. Well, the thing is... He's but a Chewbacca. He was trying to turn on women with Jar Jar's long tongue. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> uh, no, there's. You, know you thought I was going to say something serious. Uh, seriously, I totally did. Let me speak. On you were looking so. Okay, go. Although I'm not a good representative, let me speak on behalf of women everywhere and say that nothing in Star Wars is designed to turn them on. Okay, except maybe Han Solo. 
Yeah, I think yeah. my wife might speak differently. But I want to I, see your qualifications for that, Jim. There, check these out. <laughs> <laughs> Man boobs don't count. Oh. So, do you think? Do you, what do you? What do you guys think he was trying to do with Jar Jar? I mean, was well, it comic relief? Uh, it was comic it was. relief. It was for no, because he needed someone to replace three three people. Yeah, three people. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, if you if you look at the history of the comic relief. Um, he was influenced a lot by the Hidden Fortress uh, Kurosawa film, and there oh, are right. two characters in there that are very similar to. There's the kind of like obsequious guy who's serving the main character, um. and then his sidekick who's kind of short and squat and yeah. Oh. All yeah. The time. yeah. I, I know so those two saying. characters were kind of molded into what became R two and three PO, and I think that he was just looking for like, okay, now it's a new set of films. We have to have the new kind of bumbling sidekick. Yeah, right. but then why but did he... But it was he, too cartoony. Why did he give us R2 and C-3PO then? Because they're there yeah, in the but first... C-3PO's but C-3PO's not yeah, there. Yeah, it's not there. It, it could also be like a replacement of the Chewbacca character. It's yeah. That alien the, the other thing, too, is I mean, at yeah, least props yeah. for not... I could see that. ...washing and repeating. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that yeah. probably would have been Make worse. Make a you know, of money he, off of he, toys. He was he, trying to sell toys. He's the mm. one character that made an impact, and it was not a good impact. We were talking about how there were not very impactful characters. Jar Jar... Like he had some personality. He had personality. Yeah, he, he was he, he, he was a character. He started the he started empire. The that's right. It was because of him. The dumbass. <laughs> but that's just it. Is that he? But you hate him as a character. And there's another design thing too. His, like look at, look at Jar Jar and compare him to another <laughs> well-known <laughs> character like Yoda or, or anyone else from the original. <laughs> trilogy. It's well, just not that great. And you know a, what? And it was the whole thing. Like, oh, we're going to make a whole character that doesn't exist, and he's not a costume. He's commuter generated. Yeah. And they got too much into that, and he's a cartoon. I yeah. mean, he looks good, but he doesn't. You know? It's but just, still, I, I have to agree with Paul that he is so vital to the story, though. You can't get rid of him because of what he did. Yeah. And so says Kale. <laughs> it did not extend. Thank no, you. it did not. All right. Uh, the Metachlorian effect. Metachlorians? Is Star Wars more fantasy or science fiction? If more fantasy, uh, the Force remains mysterious and magical. If science fiction, we should have an explanation. I think it's like midi chlorians, midi chlorians, midi chlorians. Yes. So uh, what that's do you guys the think? big mistake: making something yeah. you can't pronounce and you can't. Understand. <laughs> that's the problem. That's a problem. Right it's there. Turning chlorine. What? Huh? Yeah, the, like the Force originally <laughs> had this kind of Buddhist influence about how mm -hmm. it permeates everything and binds everything together, and then he turned it all sciency. Now, well. In real life, I'm a big proponent of science and explaining things. I think in a work of fiction, especially something that you could argue is a fantasy, because this is not so much sci-fi, it's more of a well, fantasy. That's, and that's why I'm asking. Yeah. And I think that it just kind of demystifies it. Like, I don't necessarily yeah. want an explanation about why Gandalf can work his magic in Lord of the Rings, and right. I don't want to know yeah. why Jedi's can force It takes her. away the specialness of that, you know? that je but, why there are Jedi. But that's exactly the question. If you go, if you believe it's more science fiction, then, then that, that's perfectly fine. So you're saying it's more fantasy. Yeah, what I, do you guys say? I, I think that's fantasy. part of what Kirshner got right. Kirshner uh, always said... In interviews and whatever, he's like, people said, so how do you feel directing sci-fi for the first time? And he's like, no, this isn't sci-fi, this is fantasy. Oh, very good. And I think that was his approach. Yeah. I think that's a good point. We always connect science fiction to space movies. Right. But that's yeah. not necessarily true, thinking about Dune. It's ca well, Dune's yeah. more Star Wars, it's all mythology. Uh, well, see, Dune I is think, hard sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, you're right. right. Take that back. That. <laughs> yeah, forget that. And political. But you're right. Really think about political. it. There's not a lot of science yeah. in Star Wars. I never really thought of it that way, but you are completely right. It is fantasy. And then it's just my mind just, goes space science fiction. And he suddenly yeah. interjects it in a prequel of all things. Yeah. Which makes you wonder why 20 years later everyone forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, no one knows yeah. about I it. I mean, I understand why they put it in, because they had to put some reason why he, why he would be the chosen one. Right. But it's also... It's it's um why would, it's why would exposition one one? though I think that's one of the problems that Lucas has uh, on top of everything else is that he's very expository, like show that Anakin is powerful in the Force through him doing something really yeah. cool, not hooking up the little yeah, like, you know, yeah. reader to him and going yeah. whoa look at that it's off the scale. Yeah, could you Woo! imagine it's like Qui Gon's and it's this little boy and he's like come here come here I need to feel the Force with you oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, know, I feel okay. Wait, wait, that's really the porno it, yeah. version. Okay, you know what else got me? I knew, and, I, and granted, I knew about the the last, like we all the last three movies, but the whole balance to the force thing. I knew in the first movie what that meant. You've yeah. got no dark side. You've got all this light side. Ooh, let's bring balance to the force. Not one Jedi could have figured out that's not a good prophecy. Come on, that means you're all gonna die except for two of you. Balance, <laughs> equal. Blinded. Blinded. Oh. 
they that, were blinded by the light. Also, and up like but then exactly. again, that's also if they're, a, if, uh, okay, no, okay, if they're so spiritually oriented, they're fulfilling their destiny. So whether or not it's good for them, it's they're what they're meant to do. Ah, well, okay, I like right. that. That but that did not come across at all. Yeah, it didn't. It yeah. just came like that, like they were idiots. Maybe like, he should have added some. He probably should have added Let's some go. exposition where someone said that. Well, anyway, yeah, where on. even if it is evil, we must restore the balance because that. Right. But more, it was it was like they all missed it. They missed the point. All right, I cut off Paul. Oh, I was thinking <laughs> uh, with the balance of the force, uh, them being blinded by the light. Like a I like that. Um, it's also, you know, it's kind of like uh, their um, their cockiness, their their narcissistic yeah. feelings of like being a Jedi. Yeah, but you know, I did. Like, maybe I the Jedi they, aren't all good. Then maybe they were trying for that, yeah. and that would have been better. You know, if, if maybe maybe there would have been a bigger calamity had the Jedi uh, ruled the. Universe. See, that's that's yeah. okay. Yeah, and that's very possible. But I would have liked to have seen the Jedi starting to become a problem. You know, yeah, that would be cool. Yes, yeah, and that would have again. Right. No and more exposition. Because all they did was talk about the problem. Well, even even then, I know we're extending, right. but... We're ex are we extending officially? Or what? No, only Kale can extend. And he's not, so let's all right. move on. All right. <laughs> uh, the, now I feel like Daryl. I Darryl. refuse. <laughs> the Disney attack. Kale doesn't need extends. The last one for today. The I'm using extends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mickey. Oh. <laughs> The, the Disney, Disney effect. effect. The enormous bombshell that Star Wars, specifically the movie franchise, will not die when Lucas does. The incredible impact Lucas of Lucas handing it over to a multi-billion dollar company has on Star Wars and the fans in if general. If it's good enough for Marvel, it's good enough for Lucas. Yeah, I, I like it yeah. because um, before yeah. before Disney took it, I, I thought this is it. There's no more Star Wars. You know, it, it, Yeah, no, I thought it. it was over. And now it's like huge. I mean, it's just... Red tails. Booming. I remember I got I got a text <laughs> from KFI when that happened, that saying you know because they do the news text, right. and I was at a meeting at work with all the teachers, and I had nobody to tell. I remember yeah. I texted yeah. you uh -huh. because nobody cared, and it was you. I'm like, this is gonna be a Star Wars seven. This is gonna be, a Star and nobody cared. <laughs> that was the, that was the bomb, the the huge thing. It wasn't Disney buying Star yeah, Wars. No, 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 no. Disney we bought Star Wars, and, and uh, episode hey, seven you want to hear like, people really not care? There's going to be an Indy five. Well, I'm kind of going with the odd and even thing, like Star Trek. There, hoping, oh, right. you know, like that all their all their odd movies are good and all their even <laughs> movies are bad. Yeah, that that kind of would work out. Yeah, yeah. So that, 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 that really worked on Star Trek. They re yeah. they really can be good indie movies. Yeah, they if they'll. Have and a good it script. Disney, and no, mean that's why Disney, the right Disney got the rights to the future Disney to the future indie Indiana movies. Yeah. Yep. Really? So there's a very good possibility we might Dude, see they, something. Okay, good. they need to do a crossover then. Star Wars, <laughs> Indie, Marvel. Let's go. Avengers Assemble. <laughs> it's like Luke Skywalker, <laughs> Indiana Jones yeah. with a whip, and well, Iron well, Man. That reference. You no, know it'd be awesome. Like look, they're look. trying to defeat Galactus. And what actually brings him down is the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Makes his face melt. Look up, everyone. We can put in the show notes on YouTube. Parks and Recreation when Patton Oswalt did oh, his I, filibuster. I heard about that. And it, it mixes all, uh, Marvel and Star Wars That's together. That's awesome. I gotta <laughs> see that. And it's all like ad lib. Yeah, I heard he had to ad lib. Fully. But no, Disney taking it is great, I think. I mean, it's a little... Whoa! Disney is into that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say Disney taking it into the ass is great. Uh oh. But, but it I, would be. Some, I mean, seriously. Oh, 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 Goofy! Some employees in like <laughs> Yeah, um... <laughs> we got hey. have a problem here. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's great already, because Star Wars has a huge influence in Disney. Yeah, it does. And, and there is... Crap, I can't remember the name of the movie. The, uh, in, in uh, New Hope, uh, the crate Dragon skeleton that's mm. in the desert, that big, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing was in yeah. about a few years later or earlier mm -hmm. was a prop in a Disney movie Ooh. and something about okay. dragon something okay but I do have to say there's a stupid commercial where they want you to go no, to Disneyland no, and I'm so I'm worried about it and I'm pissed because the dad's in like Home uh, Depot I've and he's got that. the he's I've got the thing he, he puts on the helmet pretends like he's over there he has a fluorescent light bulb and he knocks over paint cans and doesn't break the fluorescent <laughs> really? light bulb what the hell if Disney gets that wrong they don't know what how strong the fluorescent <laughs> light bulb is what are they gonna do with Star Wars 7 I really don't like that commercial and it's putting Star Wars in a bad um, way <laughs> like um, in my mind I'm 
I have Wait, a lightsaber would totally one. take out. No, no, no. He's movies. pretending. The dad's pretending yeah. to be because he's like, come to Disneyland. We have Star Wars now. He's right. pretending to be Darth Vader. He puts on a metal. Uh, what is it? A welding mask. Uh-huh. He takes yeah. a what? fluorescent tube. And what part of this is meant to be realistic? No, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. He's he's like he's like, hey, well, kids, does, doesn't it glow? No, it's just a tube because he's at Home Depot. <laughs> All right, we'll extend. Oh yay! <laughs> yeah, Gail, yeah, thank you. He's it's it's a commercial showing a dad. Yeah, we're getting heated here. This he's at good. Home Depot. <laughs> good man. He's at Home Depot. I've never even he seen put, this commercial. He, he, he grabs. Like the show notes. He puts on yeah. a welding mask. I'll have to. And he goes, "I am your father." To his two little kids, because right. it goes later. Because he says, is their father. It's the irony. Yeah, right. Yeah. And he says, "Come to Disneyland," because then it shows him doing the Jedi training, and you can do the stuff. But what he does is he's got mm. the fluorescent light bulb, which is not in packaging. It's just a fluorescent light bulb. And he starts going, and he swings it and knocks over all these paint cans. The fluorescent light bulb does not break. How okay. is that possible? Okay, it's slapstick comedy. It's not slapstick comedy. That's what yes, I'm it saying. Is. No, it's not. It's the dad. Everyone's laughing at the dad because it's no. a Disney. And this is this is also bowl. an advertising agency that's probably handling it on Disney's behalf. Settle down. It's not the movie yet. Okay. Okay. They're not going to do the movie. Yeah, okay, because... they better not. Because it, it, how? Right. It just, take take your uh, little blue pills and extend. Yeah. Uh, fluorescent. <laughs> Darth Vader will not be on the just, Matterhorn in the new movie. It just looks so unrealistic. It does. It pulls me out of the commercial. Is what it does. It's All like right. if you had a floor. I don't care if you. I don't care if you're in freaking Smurf land. I re- you have a really fluorescent light bulb. You have a fluorescent light bulb. You hit paint cans with them. The but fluorescent then light bulb spend breaks. Spend money on blood effects and gore and all this other stuff. And I'm just saying maybe that would be I'm just saying. Maybe he didn't have to knock down the paint cans. Maybe he could have tripped over them instead of knocking them down with a very fragile. Well, then what about when the thing hits the ground and it doesn't shatter? He, he saves it. You, you cannot satisfy Joey. Yes, you can. No. <laughs> and we had to go. There. All you gotta do is take your lightsaber and just. <laughs> just yeah. Ram, ram, ram the can with it. That's all. Oh yeah, lightsaber. <laughs> Now, with Disney uh, buying Lucasfilm, so it's going to be up. great for the parks because they're um, um, on, the plans yeah. are on hold right now, but uh, adding more Star Wars Star Tours theme Land. Stuff awesome. to it. Yeah. All right, guys, that was okay, Star Wars. Actually, all of Tomorrowland will probably go. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that would be no, awesome. That is the that's plan, the plan? here right. yeah, in Anaheim. Very cool. Wow. No nice. more World of Tron, but that's been gone for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that was the best part. Okay, so. Uh, World of Tron. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> people awesome. movers. So that was Star Wars, everybody. Uh, I think we finally, I'm glad we hit it and hit it, hit it hard. Hard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a part three. That was hard. Maybe hard. we'll do a part three in a few years when the movie comes out, and that might be kind of cool. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Three that was. Years, huh? we, we have I was going to say, boy, you're really. What's the official? Oh, you're you're, you're optimistic, optimistic about it. Yeah. <laughs> These will have 23 subscribers. <laughs> no. By the way, we know you're out there, so email yeah. us or send us a comment because we want to know the that number you're... four with the yeah, teddy want, bear. We love this. you, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we only got a few uh, minutes here before it finishes up. So, real quick. Uh, we can't extend this part, can we? No, we can't extend this part. <laughs> Darn it. We're out of extends. We're, we going all limp. Of We're going limp. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is actually not part of the, the thing. This is the conclusion. This is conclusion. Yeah. We're just wrapping up. So yeah. we have to talk about what's next. So what's next week? Who's uh, Daryl's next? Oh, geez. Okay. Did uh, you have decentralization. Anything? We'll just do it now. All right. Decentralization. All right. You mean I like had a, that kind of in mind. Decentralization yeah. of what? Like, uh, uh, well, the next step for the internet where I think that peer-to-peer networks are going to basically dethrone the current bases of power. So government, corporations, and things will okay. become dispersed into um, less centralized a- agencies. Okay. Starting with All right. starting with economies like Bitcoin. Cool. Excellent. Okay, so that'll be in... Uh, next week's episode, episode 36, Decentralization. So, uh, this is your host, Joey Shamel, saying hope you enjoyed our uh, galaxy far, far away and yeah. long, long ago, like long a fantasy ago. would be. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, we've all also. Who else? Oh, this is uh, Paul. Oh, wait, wait, we we're going to do names. This is Jedi Joe. Oh, you're Jedi Joris. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, I'll keep going. I'll think of one. All right. You Don't say Jar Jar Joy. <laughs> I'm still Darth Utter. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Jedi Jors. Um, Jors. I'm Boba Paul. <laughs> and it sounds like a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh. I'd like a Boba with extra paw. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, and and skim soy on top. And Definitely I, a stiff drink. Uh, and I. Oh, 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 oh. whoa. Uh, Even without extends. And I am the emperor. Bow to me. That doesn't work. That either. doesn't work at all. <laughs> no, the, way you, the way you've been talking lately, it's more like I am your emperor. Bow before me. <laughs> <laughs> Kneel before Zod. And this is Joey. Or Zod. We didn't really say where we can be found. Did we? Yeah, I am Ramley.com. You could be Joey Calderzian. <laughs> all right, see you guys next time. <laughs> What's the ending credit? It goes. Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on IamRambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Santa Yoda. Santa Yoda. Put a <laughs> it was on the, the uh, from the Christmas card. Um, it goes, well, after Empire. And now for some more Paul useless Star Wars trivia. <laughs> it's not useless. Oh, uh, useful. Uh, no, no, it's not it's, really it's, useful. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just if you have to delineate between the two. <laughs> it's somewhere in the gray middle. <laughs> All right. Hmm. It won't save your life. And I begin I begin the timer with your Hey everybody. Howdy <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. yeah. I don't know how to use them. Okay. okay.